I, I just wanted to read you, Alex, the last sentence before the conclusions of our book. It's from Jacques Bassan, and it was written in 1964. He was a historian at Columbia University, and he reviewed the fluoride issue. And he says, one hopes behind the fluoride scheme there are politics and selfish business interests. The presence of solid ulterior motives would restore one's faith in common intelligence. In other words, this is such an irrational policy in here. It doesn't work. The benefits are topical, not systemic. There's no need to expose every tissue in the body to unknown toxic... You don't drink sunscreen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, you know, maybe the book is... I think it's an easy book to read for most people, and it's, it's got all the references for those that need them. Oh, we're going to carry it, too, but you've yeah. got it available. Uh, give us the website. Um, you can go to chelseagreen.com. That's the publisher, ChelseaGreen.com. There's also another... Uh, sub you can find links at Fluoride Action, uh, yeah, yeah. FluorideAlert.org. And, and you're also going to be speaking um, in a pretty big auditorium uh, tonight. Um, and you can find out at FluorideAlert.org uh, all about it. Houston Tillerson. Houston Tillerson, the big black college mm. uh, in East Austin. Plenty of parking, nice facility yeah. uh, over there. And uh, what time is that tonight? That's 7 o'clock. And it's very important because black children are particularly sensitive to fluoride. Oh! Yes. Accident. The higher rates of dental fluorosis amongst black children than white children. Part of it may be lactose intolerance. Well, doctor, I've also seen the studies about uh, not just bone cancer, but but uh, uh, association with other bone disorders, association with problems in joints, uh, bones fracturing. That's right. Uh, 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 in, in rat studies causing organ problems. This is just a wonderful ambrosia. Yeah, absolutely. We know that 50, at least 50 percent of the fluoride and more in children is absorbed by by the bone each day. And as it continues to concentrate in the bone, it, it, it causes symptoms just like arthritis. We have one in three American adults now with arthritis. Oh. And if you ask a doctor, doc, what causes arthritis? They say, well, we don't really know, but we think it's got something to do with aging. Well, aging in the United States, it, it, it runs parallel to living 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years in a fluoridated community. And by the way, people then lie and say, well, we live longer now. No, you don't. We have lower infant mortality. Uh, if you go to any old cemetery, half the people there are little kids. That's right. We've got old family cemeteries. We're literally more than half from like the 1830s pioneers. They might have 12 kids. Half of them die. But then you notice almost everybody else, 95 years old, on their tombstone. Yeah. Uh, so, no, we're actually living a lot less. I, I would like to also draw your attention, Alex, to this videotape. It's only 20 minutes long, 28 minutes long. 15 prof professionals, including three of the authors of the National Research Council report, two former EPA scientists, one who testified before Congress, a Nobel Prize winner, Dentists who had previously promoted fluoridation and have changed their mind, 28 minutes. And I think by the time people have watched this, it's an easy 28 yeah. minutes. They will be appalled. They we forgot to turn your headphones off uh, on, so they're going to be crawling around on the floor. I, I, I notice them like wolves. We always have to do it once we're on air. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Uh, they're going to crawl in, a doctor, and turn that on. But, but uh, So you can put them on in a few minutes and we can take calls. But you've got the floor. Talk about the health problems, the studies, what we know this is doing, and how we get it removed. Because you're a busy guy. You're giving a speech tonight. You're coming back here to be interviewed. You're passionate. Uh, and uh, you are also going to speak to a city council person uh, here uh, at about 2.30 while you've got to leave. So, so go over what we know it's doing medically, uh, the things that it attacks in the body and where this is going. Well, it, we can expect it to attack everywhere because it hits at the heart of, of biology when it inhibits enzymes and plays around with G proteins. But we are concerned about damage to the brain, damage to the endocrine system. It accumulates in the pineal gland. It appears to low melatonin. You know, melatonin is like a biological clock. Uh, turning on events, so we are concerned about the earlier onset of puberty, maybe partly related to fluoride exposure. Uh, when uh, After the arthritic symptoms of fluoride poisoning of the bones, the bones become more brittle, so we're worried about increased hip fractures in the elderly. I mean, there are so many things. The trouble is that when you go through this list, people are... Uh, they listen to all this list of potential dangers and they throw up their hands and say, oh, it's impossible. Yeah, that's not possible, that one substance could cause all these problems. Well, of course, it is possible. And it's the one substance the government added to the water, but because they care.
Yeah. We've never used the public water supply to deliver any other medication since 1945. And the reason is simple. You can't control the dose. You can't control who gets it. There's no individual supervision by a doctor. It's immoral to force Medicaid, but now they're promoting, doctor, lithium in the water, I, statins in the water. This is crazy. This will make us behave. But notice the people, the way people are reacting. No, no, no. They say no to lithium and no to statins, but they say yes, yes, yes to, to fluoride, even though it works top. Well, that's because I went to uh, Margaret uh, Sanger uh, School in Dallas when I was a little kid in, in the first grade. You know, we all know about Margaret Sanger, mm -hmm. the eugenicist. And uh, we were all, they, they came in several times a year, gave us the little pills. I always felt sick after I took them. And, and it had little cartoon characters, showed us film reels about Mr. Fluoride wants to help us. And so people are, f for 50 plus years, are sat down in front of film reels and taught Mr. Fluoride is going to help you. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, toothpaste has been one of the ways that most people have thought that fluoride is, is good for teeth. But you notice the FDA that has done nothing, the Food and Drug Administration has done nothing to regulate fluoridation or test fluoride for ingestion, has a warning on the back of the tube of toothpaste. It says only use a pea-sized amount. If you accidentally swallow more than that, get medical attention or contact a poison control center. Well, somebody's worked out that a pea-sized amount of fluoridated toothpaste contains a quarter of a milligram of fluoride, which you would get in one glass of water. Could you imagine the FDA requiring that sign above the tap? Don't drink more than one glass of water. Hey, guys, uh, I should have told you this before the show. I apologize. But I know I've shown tubes of toothpaste on air from just a year ago. It said that. Now they've changed it where it makes no sense. Uh, so, so they've actually removed that. It just talks about poison control and don't swallow. But yeah. they've taken the pea size comment away because it was waking so many people up. But the point is, a normal glass, one part per million, has the same amount as what's in the pea size. A pea size amount. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is where Monty Python comes in. Could you imagine over every tap there would be the same warning? If you drink more than one glass of water a day, uh, then contact a poison control center. Keep going, Doc. I'm going to yeah. show some people some fluoride right here. So I think that the, the, the concern here is that we are not being protected by any of our federal regulations on this. The EPA is not doing its job in determining a new safe level. The FDA has never regulated fluoride for ingestion. And the CDC promotes it and has got a conflict of interest when they turn around and tell everybody it's safe. Guys, we got a document cam shot. Will somebody zoom in on this? H-E-B baby. And, and it says purified water. Uh, and and it's it's uh, with fluoride added. So for five years, the government admits do not give fluoride water to babies. Yeah, it goes through their blood brain barrier. It causes dental fluorosis with the teeth that haven't erupted yet. But then magically, there's this big campaign by literally hundreds of manufacturers. Oh, it's for the baby purified water with added fluoride. Don't you tell a mother that she's been doing wrong in the past. Give that baby the oh the, look, Junior. Junior's not going to be you know. Junior's you, know, you may have 150 IQ. Junior's going to be digging ditches and lucky if he can. I mean, yeah, but hey, it's a gift, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, what's wrong with brain damaging babies? I, it's look, it's a little baby right there on the cover, doctor. I know it's good. Look at it. Does the child look happy? Look. It, it's it's hard to remember back, Alex, but in the 1940s, before fluoridation began. Fluoride had caused more damage to agriculture. The fluoride as a pollutant had caused more damage to agriculture than any other pollutant. And this was part, fluoridation, according to Chris Bryson at least, is part of the, if you like, the rehabilitation of fluoride as a ni nice substance, not a nasty substance, ruining agriculture, crippling cattle, poisoning vegetation, but it was safe enough to give it to your little kitties and brush on your teeth. Oh, that's another issue. I've seen all these vets on YouTube, mm. uh, you know, veterinarians, mm. and they talk about whenever they have droughts out in Colorado and other areas, they will then pump municipal water out to the feedlots, and the cow's hair starts falling out, they start dying, and so the farmers have figured out, man, you don't give fluoridated water to a cow. But look, it doesn't matter. If I show people a document cam shot, if I just draw a little smiley face <laughs> right there and a little smiley eyes. Yes, yeah. Then, then, I mean, it's, 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 it's friendly. I mean, I'm sorry, go ahead. But talking about animals, there's an amazing videotape called Poisoned Horses. And this is about Kathy Justice's horses in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. She 
and her husband bred show horses, quarter horses, that won 52 ribbons, and then they fluoridated their water, and unfortunately the, their horses drank that water. Their health completely collapsed. They lost eight horses and four dogs, and they loved those horses, and they looked after them like other people. They have no children. No, I've seen it. Their hair is falling out. It's awful. Awful. I mean... And the late Lenart Crook, um, a veterinarian from Cornell University, the world's leading authority on fluorosis in cattle, documents that they had fluorosis. The teeth, the bones, he, he measured the fluoride in their bones and declared categorically these animals had fluorosis. Incredible, doctor. So where do we go from here? I mean, people should be up in arms you know, with the pitchforks and torches, not literally, but metaphorically, going down to city councils and, and you know, when the smiley face mayor laughs at you, say, look, I know this city's been lobbied and given a lot of money to fluoridate. Stop it. Yeah, because tell folks where the fluoride comes from. The fluoride—it's the uh, wet scrub, uh, scrubbing liquor from the super phosphate fertilizer industry. They had to put a spray of water on to collect these toxic gases, and those toxic gases get converted into hexafluorosilicic acid. They cannot dump that stuff into the sea by international law. It's too concentrated to dump locally. But if someone buys it from them. It stops being a hazardous waste and it becomes a product. And the people that are buying this conveniently are the public water people. So once they buy it, it's a product, and now they can put into our drinking water, which they're not allowed to put into the sea. And, of course, it has a whole bunch of other crap in there in addition to well, that. Well, that's what I was going to... I've had, uh, you know, the famous dentist on, I forget his name, you'll probably remember it, uh, no. uh, from, from, from Canada. He was the guy who lobbied decades ago and was the face of let's get fluoridated. Mm -mm. And then he finally was hit the literature, wait, this isn't just sodium fluoride. I thought it was calcium fluoride. This is hundreds of other chemicals under the name fluoride. Right, right, absolutely. So what other goodies are, are in there for the children? Well, they mine the same rock for uranium, so we have to worry about radioactive isotopes. Oh, well, that's good for you. Yeah. And But the one of particular concern is arsenic, because according to the EPA, there's no safe level of arsenic. And so if you're adding a chemical to the water and it contains arsenic, which it does, then you're going to increase the cancer rate. We can argue about how much it increases the cancer rate, but as we are also arguing about how little benefit it is to swallow fluoride as far as teeth is concerned. So for a small, if any, benefit to teeth, we are risking increasing the risk of cancer amongst our population. Another bizarre twist. You know, I'm going to do a YouTube bit uh, where I'm going to, uh, and I'll spit it out later, where I'm going to drink or maybe I'll put milk in so it's fake. I'm going to drink because uh, I'm going to say, oh, it's a sunny day, you know, maybe at the beach, and I'm going to take a big thing of, say, copper tone, and I'm going to drink it. Yeah. And I'm going to go, what? That's what I do with fluoride. You know, uh, I don't put it topically on my teeth. I, I, I you know, I, I drink it, so it must be for my skin, too. I'll, 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 I'll drink the, uh, the uh, copper tone. Yeah, suntan lotion to protect these, the skin. And that's what we're doing with because it works topically. And it's not us that are saying that. This is the Center of Disease Control in 1999 said, whoops, we made a big mistake. We thought the babies had to swallow this before their teeth are erupted. We were wrong. It worked, the predominant mechanism, it works from the outside of the tooth. So why is everybody swallowing it and exposing their whole bodies to it and our babies' brains to it when they could just be brushing it on the teeth and spitting it? Uh, doctor, you think the government uh, wanted to help the children they shot up with syphilis in Guatemala? Uh, what about the black people? Or, 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 or what about the UN caught this year shooting kids up with live polio? Oh, it's an accident too, just like the fluoride. Well, of course, I have their own documents in my film Endgame, and I'll just say it on record. I like the fact you just stick to the science, uh, but we have their quotes how they're killing us, and they think it's a big joke, too. It's very funny to them. Well, let me tell you, let's go closer to home on this. The gentleman that was the chief toxicologist of the Manhattan Project, a guy called Harold Hodge, who was the number one promoter of the safety of fluoridation from the 1940s through to the practically the 1980s, also was part of the team that injected plutonium into patients at Rochester uh, Medical School without their knowledge. But plutonium's good for babies. Maybe yeah. we should put it in the water. Well, I mean, it, 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 Come it's on. certainly somebody who didn't have qualms about injecting plutonium. No, uh, sir, I, look, I got John P. Holdren's book right here about putting sterilants in the water. Yeah, yeah. really? Mm. Oh, my goodness.
Very, very nice person. He's the White House science czar. Yeah. But again, I, maybe I shouldn't read this. It's a little scary. Uh, I mean, he wrote it, but, you know.